Hi, friends. We're back with part six of Roderick Rules. All right. So we left off on a Sunday. Today was Rowley's birthday party, and he had it at the mall. I'm sure I would have thought it was a lot of fun if I was about seven years old. Kind of looks like Chunky Cheese. That was the average age of the kids at Rally's party. Rally invited his whole karate team, and most of those kids are still in elementary school. I just wish I would have known that the party was going to be like that, so I could have skipped it. We started off playing these dopey party games like Pin the Tail on the Donkey and stuff like that. The last game we played was Hide and Seek. My plan was just to hide in the ball pit and stay there until the party was over, but some other kid was already in there. It turned out this kid wasn't from Rally's party. He was from the last birthday party that happened an hour earlier. I guess he must have hidden there during hide and seek and nobody ever found him. So Rally's party had to be put on hold while the staff tried to track down this kid's parents. Oh, he's crying. After the situation got cleared up, we had cake and watched Rally open his gifts. He mostly got a bunch of kids toys, but he seemed pretty happy about it. Well, his dad's filming it. Then Raleigh's parents gave him their present, and guess what it was? A diary. It kind of ticked me off, because I knew Raleigh asked his parents for a diary so he could be just like me. After Raleigh opened his present, he said, We can call ourselves the Diary Twins. I let him know exactly what I thought of that idea by slugging him in the arm, and I really don't care that it was for his birthday either. One thing I will say though, I used to be mad at mom for giving me a journal that looked too girly. But after seeing Rally's diary, I'm not so mad anymore. So he thinks that Rally got a girly one. Later, Ra later Rally had been totally writing me. He reads the same comic books I read, drinks the same kind of soda I drink. He anything I do, he does it. You name it. Mom says I should be flattered, but to be honest with you, it's totally creeping me out. A couple days ago, I did an experiment to see just how far Rally would go. I rolled up one of my pant legs and tied a bandana around my ankle and went to school that way. Sure enough, the next day Rally came to school wearing the same exact thing. And that's how I ended up in Vice Principal Roy's office for the second time this week. There's some thugs outside my house sporting gang colors. Monday. I thought I was totally in the clear for the invisible she-rag thing, but boy, was I wrong. Tonight, Mom got a call from she-rag's dad. Mr. Gupta told Mom all about the prank we were playing on his son and how I was the ringleader. When Mom questioned me, I told her I didn't even know about she-rag's dad and what he was talking about. Then Mom marched me up to Rally's house to hear what he had to say. Luckily, I was prepared for this kind of thing. I already drilled Rally on what to do if we ever got busted, and that if we both just denied everything, we'd be okay. But the second Mom started questioning Rally, he broke down. So after our visit to Rally's house, Mom drove me over to Shirags to apologize. And let me tell you, that wasn't a whole bunch of fun. Mr. Gupta didn't seem too impressed with my apology, but believe it or not, she was... Shirag was actually pretty cool about it. After I apologized, Shirag invited me inside to play video games. I think he was so relieved to finally have one of his classmates talking to him again that he decided just to forgive me for the whole incident. So I guess I forgive him too. Tuesday. Even though Shirag let me off the hook last night, mom wasn't done with me yet. She wasn't really that mad about the joke or how I treated She-Rag. She was mad that I lied about it. So mom told me she'd ground me for a month if she catches me lying again. And that means I better watch my step because mom's not going to forget what she said. When it comes to my mess ups, mom has a memory like an elephant. That's the second time you tracked mud into the kitchen. First time was six years ago. Last year, mom caught me lying, and I paid the price for it. 
Mom made a gingerbread house a week before Christmas and she put it on top of the refrigerator. She said nobody was allowed to touch it until Christmas Eve dinner, but I couldn't help myself. So every night I'd sneak downstairs and pick a little piece off the gingerbread house. I tried to only eat tiny pieces each time so mom wouldn't notice. It was really hard to limit myself to one gumdrop or one little crumb of gingerbread each night, but I managed to do it anyways. I don't know how much I actually had been eating until mom took it off the fridge on Christmas Eve. When mom accused me of eating all the candy, I denied it, but I wish I just fessed up right away because that fib totally backfired on me. Mom had just gotten hired to write a parenting column for the local newspaper and she was always looking for new material. So that incident pretty much made me into a local celebrity. When your child is being deceptive, Susan Hefley. The weeks leading up to Christmas can be a source of stress for a child and can harbor unforeseen temptations. My son Gregory frowned that. Oh, yep, it's all about him, the news article. You know, now that I think about it, mom isn't exactly squeaky clean when it comes to being honest herself. I remember when I was a kid and she found out I wasn't brushing my teeth every night. She faked a call to the dentist office. And that call is the reason why I still brush my teeth four times a day. Dr. Kratz, do you have dentures for little boys? Oh, only wooden ones? I guess that will have to do it then. Wooden dentures? All right, well, we will find out what kind of shenanigans Gray gets into on his Friday. I'll see you guys then.